In this video, I'm going to show you an example of solving a second order differential equation with the power series method. The differential equation is y double prime minus x y prime plus y equal 0. The first step in solving differential equation with the power series is that Always we suppose the solution, y is the solution of this differential equation. We are looking for the function y that satisfies this differential equation. And because we want to find y with the power series method, we suppose y, the solution of this differential equation, to be equal to this power series sigma n from 0 to infinity a n x to the n. And from this, we have to find y prime and y double prime. The derivative of the power series is sigma n from 1 to infinity. And if we take derivative of the general term, derivative of a sub n x to the n is n a n x to the power of n minus 1. Derivative of x to the n is n x to the n minus 1, which if we multiply by this coefficient, we get this expression and the reason that we have to start n from 1 here is that the first term of this power series is a constant and the derivative of that constant is 0. The second derivative of y is sigma n from 2 to infinity. Derivative of the general term is n times n minus 1 a n x to the n minus 2. Now we have to plug in these power series in the differential equation. So we have sigma n from 2 to infinity n times n minus 1 a n x to the power of n minus 2 minus x times y prime y prime is this so x times sigma n from 1 to infinity n a n x to the n minus 1 plus y sigma n from 0 to infinity a n x to the n equal 0 Note that we can multiply this x in x to the n minus 1. And if we multiply x by x to the n minus 1, it equals x to the n. Now, if we look at these power series, in these two power series, the power of x is n. But in this one, the power of x is n minus 2. So we have to try to make the power of x here the same as the two other power series and we can do this simply by shifting the index in this power series if you are not familiar with shifting the index of a summation you can watch my videos in this regard so to make this power series the this power n we have to replace n in this general term here we replace every n here with n plus 2 and because we add 2 to the n we have to do the opposite with the starting point of this summation and the opposite of adding 2 is subtracting 2 so we subtract 2 units from the starting point so we get to this power series here we replace every n here every n with n plus 2 so this n becomes n plus 2 and if here we replace n with n plus 2 n plus 2 minus 1 is n plus 1 a n plus 2 x to the power of n plus 2 minus 2 
which equals n. We wanted to make the power of x n, which we did here. But don't forget you have to start n from 0 because you added two units to n. You replaced every n with n plus 2. And when we do so, we have to do the opposite of this operation. And the opposite of that operation is subtracting 2 from the starting point. And if we write the two other power series, we have n a n x to the n plus sigma n from 0 to infinity a n x to the n equal 0. Now, in the, all of these power series, the power of x is the same. The power of x is n. So we can just write one power series, one sigma, and then we can factor x to the n from this, this, and this. But note that we have one problem here. In these power series, n starts from 1. And if we want to factor x to the n, the starting point should be the same. We can solve this problem here very simply. Note that in this power series, if n starts from 0, like this, this power series has exactly the same terms of this power series. Because if in this power series we plug in 0 for n, we get 0 a 0 x to the 0. But this term is actually 0 because 0 times anything is 0. So if we start n from 0, nothing changes. This, we have the same power series. Here n starts from 1. But if we start n from 0, the first term will be 0. So by changing n from 1 to n from 0, we didn't change any term. We didn't add any term to the sigma. So because if we start n from 0, the first term would be 0, we can change this starting point here from 0 and nothing changes. So we replace 1 with 0. Now everything in all of these power series is the same a starting point is the same and the power of x is also the same so we can just write one sigma here and we can factor x to the n from the general terms from here we have n plus 2 times n plus 1 a sub n plus 2 From this power series, we have minus n a n, and from the last one, we have plus a n times by x to the n equal 0. If you look at the right side of this equation, the right side is always 0, and because this power series equates 0 for all values of x this happens only when the coefficient of x to the n this bracket is coefficient for x to the n this sum is always 0 if and only if this coefficient be equal 0 so here we have to set this coefficient equal 0 and from that we can find a relation between a n's which can help us to find n a n's so we have to set n plus 2 times n plus 1 a sub n plus 2 minus n a n plus a n equal 0 now note that in these two term here we have a n so we can factor a n from these two terms so we have n plus 2 times n plus 1 a sub n plus 2 
minus n minus 1 a sub n equal 0. Now from this relation, we can find a sub n plus 2 like this. If we move this to the right and we divide it by this coefficient, we can simply get to this relation a sub n plus 2 equals n minus 1 over n plus 2 times n plus 1 a n. You can write it like this. Now we have a recurrence relation here, which we can use it for finding a n's. In this relation, n starts from 0 so we have to start from 0 and we have to plug in 0 for n here if we plug in 0 for n then we have a2 note that in all of this relation we replace every n with 0 0 plus 2 here is 2 so a2 equals 0 minus 1 is negative 1 and denominator is 2 times 1 2 so negative 1 over 2 a 0 negative 1 over 2 a 0 now if we plug in 1 for n a 3 equals to 1 minus 1 is 0 and because numerator is 0, all of this bracket is 0. 0 times a2 is 0. So a3 equals 0. If we plug in 2 for n, a4 equals 2 minus 1 is 1. And in denominator, we have 2 plus 2 is 4. And 2 plus 1 is 3, a2. But note that a2 is negative 1 over 2a0. So we can write this as 1 over 4 times 3. And if we replace a2 with negative 1 over 2a0, this multiplies by negative 1 over 2a0. Negative 1 times 1 in numerator is negative 1. So we can put negative in numerator and in denominator we have 2 a 0 so a 4 equals negative 1 over 4 times 3 times 2 a 0 if we plug in 3 for n then we have a 5 equals something a coefficient times by a 3 because if we plug in 3 here, it doesn't matter what is here. Because a3, as we get here, is 0. So a5 is also equal to 0. And in the same way, a7, a9, because all of them relate to the previous one. So a7 is a factor of a5, and so on. So all of coefficients with the odd index are 0. So a5 is 0, a7 is 0, a9 is 0, and in general, all coefficients like this are 0. So only we have to find the even coefficients. Now let's plug in 4 for it. Then we have a6 equals 4 minus 1 is 3 over 3 plus 2, 4 plus 2 is 6, 6, 4 plus 1 is 5, a4. But a4 is this, and if we replace this here, then a6 equals negative 3 over 6 times 5, 4, 3, 2, a0. 
Now if you look carefully at these coefficients, a2 is negative 1 over 2a0, a4 is negative 1 over 4 times 3 times 2a0, and a6 is negative 3 over 6 pi 4 3 2 a0. You can see a pattern at least in the denominator. Here, when we have a2, denominator is 2, which you can consider this as negative 1 over 2 factor, because 2 factor is 2. And if you attention, 4 times 3 times 2 is 4 factor. And this is 6 factor. Now if we plug in these values that we get here in our power series, that here we have y, the solution of the differential equation is, if we plug in 0 here, we get a0, x to the 0. x to the 0 is 1, so only we have a 0 plus if we plug in 1 here we have a 1 x to the 1 and if you look at these relations that here we have we have no equation for a 1 so a 1 the coefficient for x to the 1 is a free coefficient and we have no restriction for a 1 so a 1 can be any real number plus if we plug in 2 in the power series, we get a2x to the 2. But note that a2 is negative 1 over 2 factorial a0. So if we replace this with negative 1 over 2 factorial x to the 2, a0x to the 2. If we plug in 3 here, because a3 is 0, as we see here, and here a3 is 0, so we don't have a3x to the 0. The next term is a4x to the 4, but a4 is this. So we have negative 1 over 4 factorial a0x4. The next term is negative 1 over 6 factorial, not negative 1, negative 3 over 6 factorial x to the 6, and so on. So this is the power series solution of the given differential equation. But if you want, you can write this answer in this form. y equals a1x plus, and if we factor a0 from these terms, we have a0 times by 1 minus, from this term 1 remains, from this term negative 1 over 2 factorial x2 from the next one negative 1 over 4 factorial x4 from the next one negative 3 over 6 factorial x6 and so on. This is the solution of the given differential equation. Here if you want, you can write this bracket in a sigma 4. But because the pattern in these terms is not completely obvious, I prefer to leave it in this form. I hope by watching this video, you have learned how to solve second order differential equations with the power series method. If you like this video, please subscribe in my channel.